This is New Cap News with Nerman Esau. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Jim Prentice has officially been sworn in as Alberta's next premier. Prentice now becomes the province's 16th premier after winning the PC leadership race by an overwhelming majority. Now, the former Aboriginal Affairs Minister is promising to make some sweeping changes while in office and says he hopes to repair the damage done by disgraced Premier Alison Redford. Now, in his first act, Prentice unveiled members of his smaller cabinet. Vermilion Lloyd Minister MLA Richard Starkey is one of many members that has seen his job change as he, as he is no longer a minister. Now, in addition to the role of Premier, Prentice will also serve as the Minister for International and Intergovernmental Relations, along with Aboriginal Relations. Now, Maureen Kubinick takes over for Richard Starkey in her new role as Minister of Culture and Tourism. Verlin Olson is one of four members keeping their current portfolios. He remains the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. And Robin Campbell replaces outgoing Doug Horner as the Minister of Finance. Now, Frank Oberly moves from Aboriginal Relations to take over energy. Former Edmonton Mayor Stephen Mandel is one of the non-elected cabinet ministers on the list and now is in charge of health. Jeff Johnson takes over the job as Minister of Seniors. Now for a full list of cabinet members, you can visit alberta.ca. Now in the meantime, Richard Starkey says he is disappointed with losing the role of Minister of Tourism, Parks and Recreation, but says he will continue to focus on his role as MLA for Vermilion Lloyd Minster. Oh, it was a tremendous privilege to serve Albertans in that capacity. I mean, and it is a wonderful portfolio. You work with uh, passionate and uh, very, uh, uh, you know, people that are very professional. But I said right from the day one, my job number one is the MLA for Vermilion Lloyd Minster. That was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And uh, uh, that's the job that we'll continue focusing on. Starkey will continue working with the Alberta government as he will be serving as a member of the Treasury Board. Well, a couple of Bonneville businesses selling tools and lumber have been targeted by thieves. RCMP are investigating two break and enters from overnight. The first one taking place at Nelson Lumber. Thousands of dollars worth of tools were taken and more than $10,000 worth of damage was sustained to the business. Meanwhile, RCMP also received a call of an attempted break and enter at the home hardware. Now, no entry was gained. However, damage was done to the front and back doors of the building. Anyone who may have seen suspicious activity either last night or early this morning are asked to call police and RCMP do believe the incidents are may be related. Now, an outstanding warrant arrest by Lloydminster RCMP led police to charge four people Friday after finding drugs during a traffic stop. Police found 17 grams of cocaine and more than four grams of crystal meth inside the vehicle, along with drug paraphernalia, bear spray, a collapsible baton, and more than $2,500 in cash. 25-year-old James Blome was sentenced or scheduled to appear in court today to face charges, including possession for the purpose of trafficking, property obtained by crime, and possession of a weapon. Meanwhile, Kimberly Harris, Chelsea St. Germain, and Maria Mavridis are to appear in court on October 20th on similar charges. Well, who stole the pumpkin from the pumpkin patch, or in this case, the Halloween store? Now, local business is gearing up for the upcoming holiday, but had a setback over the weekend when they discovered their 26-foot inflatable landmark, known as the Great Pumpkin, was stolen. It was our pumpkin. It was a big signature thing for our business. It's really important to us, and I, I just hope we get it back. Amanda Rockwell, store manager, says the pumpkin isn't just a good marketing tool. It holds sentimental value. It was at her parents' first Halloween store before coming to Lloydminster. So it was an excellent landmark for us. We had it roped down and whoever took it um, cut all the ropes, deflated it and then somehow took it. It's not an easy thing to get away with. I'm sure it probably would have taken them a while because it sure took us a while to put it up. She says it's expensive but staff don't want to reveal the exact value and they say that they have contacted police. Whoever did take it, we just want it back. There's no hard feelings. Uh, we won't press charges. Please just give it back. The great pumpkin's very important to us. <laughs> 
As for a reward, they haven't come up with anything as of yet, but are willing to compensate the cost to bring it back.